The first thing we would like to do is establish the initial coordinates of the basketball. And to do that, we can imagine superimposing an X and Y axis in the picture. And so now if you look at this coordinate system carefully, you should see that the initial X coordinate of the basketball is zero. So we can write that down as X subscript zero is equal to zero. And then if you look at the diagram, the initial Y coordinate of the basketball would simply be this height right here, marked H1. That was given to us as seven feet. So we can write down that the initial Y coordinate is equal to seven feet. Next, we want to look at the final position of the basketball and determine the X and Y coordinates over there. Now, the final X coordinate is a little bit tricky because if you look at the diagram, they gave us this distance here, which is marked D2, and that was 14 feet right there. But then they also gave us this little distance right here, and that little distance was marked D1, which was one foot. So what we want is the distance from the y-axis over to where the basketball is located right there. And if you look at the diagram carefully, you would have to take that distance D2 of 14 feet and subtract off that distance D1 of one feet. So basically, the final x-coordinate of the ball is going to equal 13 feet. The final y-coordinate of the ball is a little easier to ascertain because that's simply this height right here, this H2 which is given to us as equaling 10 feet. So the final Y coordinate of the basketball is 10 feet. Next, let's take into account the fact that the launch angle is 55 degrees. And we can use that angle to find the uh, X component of the initial velocity, which we're gonna represent right here, and then the Y component of the initial velocity. For now, we're just gonna call this X and Y. We wanna solve for those. So if we look at this right triangle, we can see that the cosine of the 55 degree angle would equal the side adjacent, which is X, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the V naught. Multiply both sides of that equation by V naught, and you would see that the X velocity is V naught cosine of 55 degrees. So we can go back to this drawing here, and we can say that the X component of the initial velocity is V naught cosine of 55 degrees. Now you could use the sine function to solve for y. You might want to try that on your own. In fact, we could just do that right here. We could say that the sine of 55 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is the v naught, and then multiply both sides by v naught. You can see that that y velocity is v naught times the sine of 55. So let's go back and label that on our triangle here. It looks like this 55 degree angle just jumped randomly across the page. That's kind of weird. So we'll put that here, and then this was V naught sine of 55. Okay, so we have all the data organized in the way that we want. Now we're gonna put it into a table to get a little bit even more organized. So here is a chart summarizing what we know so far. Remember, the initial coordinates of the basketball were 0, 7, the final coordinates were 13, 10, and then we have the initial X component of the velocity and the initial Y component of the velocity, and those represent this initial velocity right here. Now we know a little bit more in the y direction because the acceleration in the y direction is negative 32 feet per second squared. So we can fill that in. In the x direction, the ball is actually not accelerating because gravity, which is causing acceleration in the y direction, does not act in the horizontal direction. Things don't fall sideways, basically. So we can mark that acceleration as equaling zero. Now, what we're going to do is use one of the equations of kinematics to derive an expression for the time. And the neat thing about doing that is that the time in both the x direction and the y direction are equal. So whatever time in x would equal the time in the y and vice versa. Let's take a look at the kinematics equation that we're going to be using. So here is that equation in the x direction. We can start to fill in some of the data. You can go back to the table and derive this information. So the final x coordinate was 13, the initial was zero. The initial velocity in the x direction was that v naught cosine 55 times the unknown time. And this is nice over here because we're going to have one half times the acceleration in the x direction, which was zero, and then times the unknown time squared. That term drops out because you're multiplying by zero. So now we have 13 
is equal to V naught cosine of 55 multiplied by time. So we can solve this for time pretty easily by dividing both sides by V naught cosine of 55. That'll cancel it out on the right hand side and now we have the following expression for time. Now as noted earlier, this expression for time can be transferred not only for the x direction, but also for the y direction. So let's go back and plug that into our table. Great, there we have that expression plugged in for the time. Now we're gonna use the same kinematics equation, but this time we're gonna plug in the information from the y direction. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So here is that equation. The final y coordinate was 10, the initial y coordinate was seven. The initial velocity in the y direction was the v naught times sine of 55 degrees. And then the time, well, we just figured out that expression. That was the 13 over v naught cosine of 55. So plug that in very carefully. And then we have plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction was negative 32 feet per second squared. And then the time again is this 13 over v naught cosine 55 squared. Okay, we're getting very close here because if we look, we can simplify this equation very readily. So on the left side, we have just three. Now, look here, this is kind of neat. The V naughts when we divide would cancel out. And then furthermore, we have the sine of 55 divided by the cosine of 55. Remember, a trig identity tells us that sine divided by cosine is tangent. So you actually have the tangent of 55 degrees, and then that's multiplied by 13. Over here, you could multiply the 1 half by the negative 32, so that's gonna be a minus 16. And then we're going to end up squaring the numerator and the denominator. So 13 squared, so we're talking about right here, 13 squared is 169. And then on the bottom, you're gonna square the V naught, so that's V naught squared, and then you have to square the cosine of 55. Now I'm picking up a calculator and I'm doing the cosine of 55 degrees and then I'm squaring it. And this gives me 0.33 roughly. So we'll just fill that in right there. Okay, now we can next multiply 13 and tan 55. And when you do that, you get 18.6 approximately. Now over here, perhaps we could multiply 16 by 169, which is 2704. So now we have 2704 all over, and then we can maybe just write this as 0.33 V naught squared. We're getting closer and closer. Let's subtract 18.6 from both sides of this equation, canceling it on the right side. We now have negative 15.6 is equal to negative 2704 over that denominator. Next, we could put this over a one and then just cross multiply. So when we multiply that way, we're gonna get negative 27 over four. And when we multiply the other way, what you probably would wanna do is multiply the negative 15.6 by that 0 0.33, and you'll get about negative 5.14 roughly. So now you have negative 5.14 times V naught squared. Next, We'll divide both sides by the negative 5.14. This gives us V naught squared is about 526.4. And then finally take the square root of both sides and you will find that V naught is approximately 22.9. And because we were using feet in this question, this will be in feet per second. So this is the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.